All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are Myth Vision, and I'm here with Dr. John Dominic Cross. And how you doing? Hi. So we just did a bunch of recordings. Um, I feel like we did a lot of recordings. I'm going to bring this back just so we can both get in the okay. frame. I want to say thank you to the Patreon members for supporting me and doing what I'm doing, making these possible. His book, Render Unto Caesar, get it read. Get it read. Get you a copy. Order it Amazon. You know, it's on Audible. You can listen to it. Um, must read because we're going to be doing some live streams. And when we do, we want to do Q&A. We want the Q&A to stay focused on the book, but I want to get more people acquainted with it. I loved the work. Really excited. If you don't mind, tell them, why did you write this book? Um, well, the coin fascinated me. I lived in Jerusalem for two years. And so, somebody in the old city, I was living just outside the Damascus Gate in the French School of Archaeology. This was, uh, that was 65 to 67 for the war. So somebody sold me, not, not a real coin, I knew it wasn't a real coin, but a silver denarius. They said, now this is the, this is the coin, the type of coin that Jesus had. And, you know, I thought, fine, I, I like it. It's nice to have a silver denarius. It was, it was about the size of a dime. And it's written in Latin. And it's abbreviated Latin. And I was trying to think, I wonder would Jesus have known how to read <laughs> abbreviated Latin? Would he have known that F means filius or, or that A-U-G means Augustus? Would he have known this? And would his people have known it? Wouldn't they be talking Aramaic, not Latin? Is this really the coin? This is the most likely coin? So the book really starts with what I think it's, it's on the cover. You can see it. The coin that most likely was the coin. Because it says in Greek, Theos, Sebastos, Kaiser. It's about the size of a dime, or, or that dime, I said, sorry, a quarter. So it's a larger one. Nice big Greek letters. You can read it very clearly. God, Augustus, Caesar in Greek. So here's a coin that says God is Caesar. Whoops. And Jesus says, well, you give to Caesar, Caesar stuff, and you give to God, God stuff. But he's just separated what the coin has equated. So mm. that started the book. If Jesus separates what the culture equates, how did the first Christians, uh, at least in the New Testament, let's say, how did they react to it? Because they had to live under God and Caesar, <laughs> the two of them. How did they do it? How do we do it? So the book then is looking at, say, the Revelation, which is a culturation demonized, <laughs> and Luke Acts, two-volume work, not a book in a sequel, but a two-volume work, in which acculturation is sort of canonized. Well, what did Jesus himself do about it? What did the historical Jesus? And that's what I call acculturation criticized. I must admit. In your and that's book, our model. Your book, it, this is what I loved. You can't read this book and then read your New Testament and not actually factor in the political, social aspects that are going on. And to those of you who are Roman provenance people who say that Christianity was invented from top down, well, look to this book for criticism because this book's going to be a critical critique showing a ground up model. Um, for those who are interested in a ground up model showing how a grassroots movement would have evolved into actually and I use the term evolved literally because yeah. we talk mm -hmm. a lot about that in our interviews, but to absorb and literally kind of um, consume the empire at some point, this ideology becomes the very thing that becomes the religion of the empire. You're going to want to read this book. It, it covers so many interesting things. I love the Luke Acts. We did, what, eight to ten recordings? Yeah, I think so, because we started at 10, took a break for lunch, and it's now about 3.30, so what's that? <laughs> That's about five and a half hours with a half, say five hours <laughs> according to that. Five hours, I'm going to say, with, with a quickie break for a Starbucks. Um, I think it's, it, it's really important to look at the book and see the questions they're asking, because it's, I'm going to create a word, religio-political. You, you really can't look at Jesus as if he's just religious and he, by accident the Romans kind of crucified him as a mistake. He was, he was making a claim about how the world should be run economically, social, uh, religiously, politically. And the Romans said, thank you very much, but we already know how to do it. And we're doing it. 
and here's the cross, <laughs> which is our way of sending you goodbye. But as I say, sometimes Pilate must have said when he was talking to his, his wife that evening, don't worry, dear, what happens in Jerusalem stays in Jerusalem. <laughs> He got that one wrong. <laughs> right? No, it definitely didn't stay in Jerusalem. It's been a fantastic time with him. I wanted to do this recording. For those of you who have um, want to see these videos, I will be editing them over the next few weeks and start editing them. There's going to be some fascinating photos. You've taken quite a few, I mean, thousands and thousands of photos over the years. And some of these photos, we talked about this earlier, you had to spend quite a bit of money just to be able to take them. And they're... You have images, not to brag, but let's brag a little. You have images that no academics have probably even seen or have not made. There are they're just not publicly known. We're going to try and incorporate some of those. Yeah, we have some images. Um, the most difficult ones and the most expensive ones are manuscripts. Say from Mount Athos or the Vatican uh, manuscript room, and they're <laughs> they're they're not very congenial with showing them. Outside the book, that may be mm. the typical thing. You can go into a church and take an image, and nobody stops you, and you, you can put that up. That, that's fine. It's it's World Heritage Site, so we, we have a right. Manuscripts are tricky. Somebody has to ha keep them in, you know, bomb-proof, germ-proof, everything-proof vaults like they have in the Vatican archives. They, <laughs> the elevator goes down and brings them up, and maybe <laughs> you get to look at them and gloves and the whole bit. But the, they're terribly important, and... Very often, they're terribly expensive to get, and you have to go to Rome to get them and everything else. So there's, this is the book, Resurrecting, Resurrecting Easter, how the West lost and the East kept the original Easter vision. The West shows Jesus kind of basically ascending from the tomb. The East shows Jesus taking Adam and Eve by the hand out. And Adam and Eve represent the human race. So how does the East show Jesus resurrecting the whole human race? And the West just says he's up there all by himself. What is happening? So in the book, the previous book before the this one that Derek has been talking about, the uh, render unto Caesar, Sarah and I traveled over the Byzantine world oh, about 15 to 20 times once a year or twice a year to be able to explain to people the profound difference between the theology and iconography, imagery, of the Western idea of Easter and the Eastern idea of Easter. So to put it bluntly, if you are a scholar or anyone else and you're talking about Easter and you think the Western image of Easter is it, then that's a little bit too Eurocentric for me. It's just wrong. Because the, the whole East has its own very different image. And that's probably only true of Easter, I would say. If you looked at the crucifixion, baptism of Jesus, the Annunciation, Transfiguration, riding into Jerusalem, East and West are pretty much the same. Only in Easter are they radically different. And that raises a huge issue. And I'll conclude with this. If Paul and the Corinthians had been arguing about the resurrection and they said, OK, now we know what crucifixion is. We've seen them. Draw us a picture, Paul, of what you think resurrection would have been like. If we were there, what would we have seen, Paul? Would Paul have drawn something like the Western one or the Eastern one? I think he would have drawn something like the Eastern one. <laughs> so the West has lost the heart of Christianity the understanding of resurrection. Wow. So I must say this, as we're wrapping things up, um, we have two things here, right? Two sides to one coin. We have Dom's books, and yes, he told me to call him Dom. Mm -hmm. And then we have Derek Myth Vision's Patreon, right? And I'm going to put this as succinct as I can. Render unto Dom that which is Dom. <laughs> Go get his books. <laughs> And render unto Myth Vision that which is Myth Visions. Join my Patreon. I think we can harmoniously live in peace in this type of world. And nobody has to be crucified. But seriously, his work is amazing. Other academics, Dr. Tabor, swears by it. 
He really appreciates your work, and I, I really appreciate you coming on my vacation to do a little work here. I uh, hope my family will forgive me. <laughs> that's, that's the other question. <laughs> that's the question. It's not the whole render unto. But uh, seriously, get a copy of his works. I've had a lot of positive feedback about your work yeah. in my chat, and I know that when we go to do a live feed, people are going to enjoy it. So Love to do it. Thank you so much, and never forget, we <laughs> are MythVision.